So that's 3,000 of an inch going under without much issue. Hey, I got something, something to say. I'm just so sick of hearing. There were only two bolts on the back and the, um, the gas tank actually just kind of locks in place. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's not very hard. You got one, two, three, four, and I think one, two, and the fifth connection's right here. So you have five connections to the actual gas tank itself. So there should be a mark in there and I will turn it over until I get to that point. So as you can see, the T and right here, there is an arrow to line that T up with. So I did that and I did circumvent opening this uh, by using the gearing on the rear end. And I just spun the engine over by using the rear wheel and my foot to align the T. Go ahead and remove the spark plug. That way you don't have to battle compression during uh, spinning over of the engine because that's gonna give you quite a workout if you don't. So now I will remove the covers and we'll get to adjusting. So um, here is my four thousandths filler gauge and from where I have used these working I have broken them a little bit but let's see if we can get those in there. Four will not go. Will three go? Three thousandths will not go either. And we've got three thousandths and it will not go. So we'll have to adjust that valve a little bit there. That's four barely going in, so that's that is about right. So that's three thousand of an inch going under without much issue and here is four thousandths of an inch getting it on there is kind of a pain in the ass so four thousandths of an inch barely goes in it's really gritty I might try to open it up a little bit more thousandths again I 
and pour is really grabby. Six does not go in at all, so it's good on that. So I will now tighten this little thing down. And I just want to hold that valve in place. All right, so let's snug it up a little bit more than that. All right, and we want to do a final check. Won't go. It's four. Four goes. A little gritty. That's good. All right. So I can put that together on the back and then move to the exhaust. So now for the exhaust, it should be from nine to 10 thousandths from what I understand. Uh, that's the tolerance. So um, here's a nine. The nine does not go under. So obviously the 10 won't either. So we'll have to adjust that. Nine's going in pretty good. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's good. But I don't think 10 will go in. I think 10's still going to be a little bit big. Nope, 10 goes in. I think it just drags a little bit too much. Let me try 11. If 11 doesn't go in, we're good to go. 11. Eleven does not go in, so we're good. So I'll tighten that down and let's start putting the bike back together. Just want to put a little bit of pressure on the valve itself. Again, not clamping, just pressure. And we'll recheck measurements. So let's make sure that it didn't get any bigger. So here's an 11. Eleven does not go in. And then here's the 10. If 10 goes in, we're good to go. 10 goes in. Perfect. So now we can put that cover back on. All right, now all to do is to put the bike back together and we're good to go. And another thing is that the spark plug looks fine. I'm gonna pop that back in. I did notice it's running a little bit lean, but that's okay. I think that's okay. If it's not, it's under warranty anyway, so. 
<laughs> but spark plug looks good. It's clean. It's not rich or anything. If it was running rich, I would be concerned since this is a fuel injected bike. So I'm glad that it's not actually running rich. So the job of adjusting the valves on the Himalayan took me all of 45 minutes and that includes manipulating the camera as well. So if I wasn't manipulating the camera, it would probably have been 25 or 30 minutes. Uh, working the camera is a whole lot harder than I thought it would be. However, I will say that this job is within just about anybody's wheelhouse. I don't think it's that in-depth of a job that you need to hire somebody. If you're not comfortable doing it, of course, take it to someone. Take it to someone that's qualified to do these things. Um, but if you have the tools and you have the space and you know you have the time, learn how to do it. It's It, it will help you in the long run and it will also help you uh, not just become a more well-rounded person, but help you figure out what's wrong with your bike if something ever happens. Working on your own equipment helps a lot because you know exactly what results to what, what effect blank. So, and this was a lot easier of a job than I initially thought it was gonna be. It was really easy, especially taking the tank off. I mean, I had never taken the tank off this bike and it took me five, six minutes. I mean, that was the longest part of all of this was just taking the tank off. Everything else was really easy, including um, putting the engine at top dead center. You don't really need to take the uh, side plate off to turn the engine over. You can just put this in gear in like second or third gear and spin the engine over. Um, as long as you take the spark plug out, you can spin it over with the back tire, which is something that I did. Uh, got it to top dead center and that was it. And everything else went together really well. So I, I will say that if you have the time and you want to, definitely go, go about doing this. All right, until next time.